This video is going to be about coping strategies and understanding uh, the relationship between the mind, the body, and the emotions. Um, it's something that I like to do with clients where I like to invite them to check in on those three different levels or those three different ways um, because one thing that can easily happen with people is that they feel like they're sort of all over the place or they don't know how they're feeling or they there's just a lot going on internally and there is hard to organize all that information. So doing a check-in where you divide it into different sections makes it easier to understand like what's going on with you and then what to do next. So, um, so uh, if we're just going to start with the body, we'll start with investigating any physical sensations you feel in your body and noticing how your body is feeling today in general. Like, is there a lightness in your chest? Are you feeling like really sunken down and grounded? Do you feel, um, feel a tension somewhere or, or an energy somewhere? So it's just a moment to like check in with your body and notice any physical sensations or how your body is doing today in general. Um, and then you can do a check in with your mind. So that's asking yourself, you know, how is my mind doing today? Is there, is there just kind of like you know, smooth ways to sort of experiencing or being? Um, is there a lot of energy, a lot of thoughts going on in my mind? Um, is, am I feeling like my mind is like just, just like really out there all over? Or does it feel like I'm just like really fixating or holding on to one thing? Um, so just doing that check-in with your mind to see where your mind is at, um, uh, it can be an interesting experience um, if you choose to just kind of divide it up like that. So, so we discussed how the body was feeling, and then check in with how your mind is feeling. Um, and then the third check-in would be how do your emotions feel? Um, so that would be like, what emotion are you feeling today? You know, what emotion are you feeling right now? Um, and this, of course, is not an easy answer. It could be like you might be feeling just one emotion or you might have a bunch of them. You might have a couple at the same time um, or they might be just continue to change in different sequences. So there's no right answer, of course, but it's just a touching base with that part of yourself. What feeling am I having right now? What emotion? If I were to give it a movement, what kind of what kind of. Um, what kind of movement would my emotion feel like or that part of me feel like right now? Um, so that's, that's checking in on that level. So, so this first step of what we're doing right now is checking in with ourselves on different levels. Checking in on a physical level, checking in on a mental level, and then checking in on an emotional level. So the reason that I think it's helpful to do that um, is because when you bring your attention to all those different parts of you, it helps bring all those parts together into a whole. So one thing that can happen a lot with uh, struggling with mental health can be when your mind's in one place and your body is feeling something else and your emotions are doing something else. And it's just like, there's just so much going on. It's really hard to, to bring it all together. So when you, if you go ahead and you divide it up on purpose, you're like, okay, well, let me meet myself. What's going on with me and with my body? Okay, and what's going on with me with my mind right now? And then how are my feelings right now? You're giving yourself like smaller chunks to be aware of and you're taking your consciousness or your attention, uh, consciousness or your attention to these different parts of yourself and just kind of meeting these different parts wherever you notice that you are without any judgment, right? That's important, just giving yourself room to connect to whatever it is and express it a little bit um, or a lot and uh, and then kind of get a grasp on or like a, a feel for where all those different things are. Um, and as you do that, you actually kind of create a hole for yourself in your psyche or in your awareness. You're creating this hole for these different parts to be all part of the same phenomena or the same person. Um, so, and when you do that, then it starts to make it easier to handle what's going on because there's more of your resources are coming to the, to the, uh, 
to the present moment, right? So when you cut, when you connect to different parts of yourself, you're bringing more of yourself to the present moment, and that's called like garnering your resources or gathering resources because you're bringing more stuff of yourself into the present moment by connecting to it, becoming aware of it, being with it, not judging it, that kind of stuff. Um, and so, uh, so, so that's one piece. And I, right now, I'm just going to kind of move that to the side a little bit because I want to discuss this other idea, which is uh, coping strategies. So, so if you don't know what coping strategies are, I'm just going to give like a brief explanation. A coping strategy is um, can be conscious or unconscious. If it's conscious, it means that you're doing something, some behavior on purpose to help yourself handle something or to help yourself feel better. If it's unconscious, you're doing that behavior unconsciously to help yourself feel better um, or to handle something. And uh, so I'm, you know, it's like this for everybody. We all have unconscious coping strategies because we grew up with them and it just like happens really fast. And so it can be really tricky to catch those. Um, as you become more aware and more conscious of yourself, then you start to notice what your unconscious coping strategies might be, like whether it's reaching for a substance or taking out a negative emotion on somebody else or shutting down, um, you know, drowning yourself in Netflix or whatever it is. I mean, I've done all, you know, I've done, I've done it, so I get it. Uh, but so, so just becoming aware that you might be attempting to cope with something and using an unconscious strategy already brings the awareness that like, there could be another choice. If you wanted to make another choice, you could make another choice. So, um, so that's, that's, that's that, you know, that's where that, the, the bridge is. You can, you know, decide to go over to the other side and be like, okay, I'm going to use a conscious coping strategy instead of just going along with the flow and allowing myself to just use these unconscious strategies that I've always used. Um, so, when we get to conscious coping strategies, what that means is doing a behavior on purpose that you know will help you handle the present moment, how you're feeling or situation you're going through. Um, and I believe it's really, really good to get a super long list of coping strategies or behaviors that you like to do that will help you uh, get through, help you manage emotions and help you uh, feel even, calm, um, uh, relax, uh, clear, you know, have more clarity. So it's really good to get a bunch of coping strategies to help that way. Um, so I'm going to talk about a way of applying coping strategies that can be helpful for people. So, so you know how we divided up the check, like this checking in or connecting with different parts of yourself is the mind, the body, and the emotions. Um, so so what I want to suggest is when you feel like you need a coping strategy, it's really helpful if you can identify where is the unrest coming from? Is it coming from my mind? Is it coming from my physical body? Or is it my emotions? And I mean, it, it's probably always a combination of all three, but, but sometimes you can notice it's more this right now, or it's more that right now. Um, and when you notice that, then you can tailor the coping strategy that you choose to help most meet your need. So for example, if my mind is all over the place, so I'm having a lot of thoughts going on and I'm just feeling very like swept up or caught up in my head, then I want to pick a coping strategy that will meet me there in that issue. So something like a guided meditation, um, listening to music maybe, um, listening to a podcast, reading a book, uh, like a self-care book, doing some journaling, um, what else, uh, breathing exercises, but uh, basic, or watching something that feels calming for you, that would like, feel like it will help relax your mind. Um, but basically you wanna do something that will help your mind feel more at ease more calm. Um, and that will be healthy for you, right? The idea of conscious coping strategies is that they're, they're ones that are healthy for us and don't hurt ourselves or anybody else. So um, just want to put that in there. But, uh, but anyhow, so like as you're, so if you're noticing that the unrest is up here in your mind, 
then you can do something that will, that will address that part of you, um, that will bring a different type of energy to your mind. Um, if you notice that the unrest is on it, so the next thing, if you notice that the unrest is in your body, then you can do things, coping strategies that will help your body to feel better, such as stretching, yoga, tai chi, qigong, taking a bath, going for a walk, swimming, some kind of exercise, um, getting a massage. Uh, if you have a pet, you know, cuddling with your pet or playing with your pet. Um, what else? Using a, like a fuzzy blanket to cuddle up in. Um, having something to drink or something to eat. Uh, so, so those are suggestions of body-centered coping strategies that will directly address how your body is feeling and ideally would help your body feel better. Um, okay, that's, that's enough, some ideas there. Now for emotions, let's say that your emotions feel like they're, you know, really frustrating or you feel like you're all over the place or, or that you have a bunch of emotions going on at once or everything's really confusing um, or you're like, uh, or you have a really strong emotion, like if there's one emotion that's just like, Woof, this is like super big, super strong. You're like, oh my God, this is like way too much. Um, that's a good time to uh, use a coping strategy that will help you to um, navigate your emotion, manage your emotion, contain your emotion, and break down your emotion into manageable pieces. So there's a lot of stuff we can do with emotions. Um, so, uh, so it's good to find coping strategies that will directly address your emotions. Um, one that I really like for that is art. You know, that could be paint, crayons, colored pencils, regular pencils, um, you know, sculpture, clay, anything that's artistic. Art, art is a really great way to release your emotions into something, and it can feel calming to do. Um, movement and dance can also be great if it doesn't feel like the emotion is uh, unmanageable. So picking some music with a really good rhythm and just moving to the rhythm for a while, or, or you can look up something called five rhythms, and those are a type of movement meditation where it plays music in five different rhythms, like from slow meet to up to medium, fast, medium, slow. Uh, you could do like a five rhythms playlist on Spotify or something. And the idea would just be to move to the beat of the music and use the movement and the rhythm as an organizing uh, factor for yourself to give the emotions somewhere to go. So you're moving the emotion through your body. Um, so as an art, dance, and music, you can play an instrument to release feeling. You can listen to music to release feeling. Um, the idea is allowing the feeling to be expressed and moving through it and releasing it in a way that feels like you have something to release it into. So he's like releases it into the music or into the art or into the dance. Um, also journaling, writing poetry, that's somewhere else where you can focus that you're releasing the emotion into the object um, so that there's a, a destination or a way to channel it. Uh, so it doesn't feel like it's like too much or it's like that it doesn't have anywhere to go or it doesn't have a clear place to go. Um, and, uh, yeah, I feel like that are some good suggestions for emotions. Um, there's always more to come up with in every category, but my basic idea of this video is that if you become aware of your mind, your body, your feelings, and noticing when something needs adjustment or additional support, you can choose a coping strategy that would meet your need that would that would attend to your mind or would would attend to your feelings or would attend to the physical sensations you feel in your body um, and when you do that you get better at meeting your need and you become more balanced you you know you just you're the whole thing is kind of like a balance of the mind body and the feelings and it all flows together um, so as you notice one part becoming off balance or out of whack, then you address that part and do something to help that part come back so that you feel more centered and aligned. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting about this is there's like the recalibration, like using coping strategies as a recalibration of whatever, it, whatever part of you needs the coping strategy. And then the idea is the more unified and whole you feel because all the parts are 
coordinating, cooperating, and moving together, being together, then the easier it is to make a bigger shift of your whole self to a better place, right? So, because one thing is uh, working with mood disorders or anything like that, being able to lift up the baseline uh, is a great goal. So a baseline is like, this is where my mood is most of the time. I normally feel here, right? That's, that's called your baseline. So to be able to lift up the baseline means that on a daily basis, maybe I can get my mood to be generally more here. Um, and part of how we make those deep changes with our mood and our emotions is being able to apply coping strategies effectively. And then when you do that on a regular basis and it becomes a habit, then you know you're you're doing things that continue to help your help yourself thrive and feel more connected um, and more supported. And you kind of like you're learning you learn to support yourself by applying coping strategies well. So so it's really interesting. As you get more effective at applying the coping strategies, it continues to help you like grow and thrive. Um, and then the idea is if you feel more whole, then it's easier for you to make a, a whole a shift with your whole self to a different place. Um, whereas if you're kind of like in different places, your mind, your body, your feelings are all like all over the place or different places, it's really hard to make a shift to something different in your life because you've got so many different pieces to keep track of. And it's like, and it's hard to keep track of all that. But when you when you work for this unified or holistic thing first, then it becomes much easier to make a shift to something new because you're all together and then you take all of that over over to something else. Um, and then you like, you know, can be like living in a different place, sort of uh, uh, being in a different way in the world um, when you're able to take all of yourself to a new place. Um, and that's like, Oh, that's a long, that's a long kind of understanding how to take all of yourself over to something new, but it basically has to do with just being able to make a change uh, or being able to allow changes to happen in our life that make us more content or satisfied or happy. Um, and that can be uh, about opening to the unknown, which is a, which is a whole nother thing. So. Uh, if you've watched the video to the end, thank you so much for making it here. I hope there was something helpful in this, and uh, I will be around. Thanks. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions.